Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now today I'm going to be looking at CD players. Um, these two specifically, more of which later. Um, now the CD market has been doing weird things. Um, the actual CD player market. It's 2017, 2018, I don't think I sold a single player. It died, completely died. Uh, lots of manufacturers were stopping making them. Now, I think NAB stopped making them, Linda name. I mean, Linda stopped them years ago. Um, partly because of the streaming thing. I think everybody assumed that that's where it was going. And, you know, lots of people were buying record players and they just weren't spending the money on the CD players anymore. So it was assumed that it was, it was dead in the water and it wasn't going to do anything. About, yeah, about 2018, 2019, they started to sell again. Um, I think there's many, many reasons for that. I think there was a certain element of people who got into streaming who didn't really understand the complexities of it or expected more of it than was there or I think got into it then realised they didn't have any anything that they'd bought to hold if you know what I mean it's sort of that, that, that collectability of the, of, the, of the music format wasn't there and they, they missed it so bit by bit people started to buy CD players again and um, now it's actually quite common it's um, like I said the record player market is Growing and growing and growing, um, as is streaming. But I mean, I don't sell streamers, even if, despite people telling me I'd make a fortune if I did because it's a massive market. That's another story. It's a story for another video. That I think actually there are many reasons I don't sell streamers. Sound quality is one of them, <clears throat> but there's lots of other reasons as well. Which, like I said, I'm not going to that now. Um, but yeah, the CD player market um, is growing rapidly, but it's sort of fragmented in a very strange way, because I've, I've found that under, under about £700, they're not really produced as an audiophile product anymore. They're very much uh, a lifestyle or, you know, they've got to look nice, they've got to have features, they've got to do this or whatever else. Sound quality, yeah, perhaps that as well. But there's no real importance put on the, on the sound quality. I mean, there's a, a couple of manufacturers have sort of stuck with it, I think. Um, Brandt still do the, a couple of decent players. Um, probably not as good as they used to be. I mean, when Brandt was the, a real force to be reckoned with, I, just, I don't think they're at that level. And I've not sold them for a long time, but they just, um, I think they're one of the few are hanging on and doing sort of lower end players quite well. But generally, um, nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing it to the degree of, I think there's an awful lot of players around three or four hundred pounds that you might be better just buying a DVD player because it's probably very similar inside and all these extra superfluous things are adding on. You could probably get as good a sound off a DVD player. Now, that's a controversial thing to say, but I'd re yeah, from what I've sort of experimented with and heard, um, I think that market has kind of, kind of died to death, really. So it's kind of starting around £700, which is a lot of money, to be fair. It's a lot of money. Um, I think if you sort of project back to the early days of CD, it's not as much as it kind of... You feel it, it feels as it is, but um, yeah, it's still quite a lot of money. But my problem has been, at £700, I had the Riga Apollo, uh, which has recently gone £700. It was sort of around about the 600 but obviously things, as things go up, as they are at the moment, we're now on £700 for an Apollo. There's no competition for this at the moment. Um, and the thing with the Apollo is, it's got the engagement and that sort of musicality that you normally only get from high-end players. I mean, Riga have, have always been brilliant at this. I mean, they, okay, they're a record player manufacturer, but whatever they do, they seem to do to the nth degree and they really listen and they get the right people in or whatever to, 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 to do what they need to do. And all their players have been very good. And the Apollo is just continuing that you know, that sort of tradition, really, of superb-sounding CD players that are very, very engaging to listen to in a very similar way to vinyl, really. Not totally as good as vinyl, but there's, de there's a definite sort of vinyl-y sort of feel to their players. They're not as clear as some. Uh, they don't have that precision that a lot of, you know, the sort of other competition may have. But... They do, like I say, they do have a warmth and a, an engagement that their competition don't at all. Uh, and most, most digital stuff to me does sound very flat and very insipid and very bland. Okay, you can hear all the instruments, but you're not really that interested in what they're playing. It's, it's a very strange thing, digital, the way it does that. 
Which brings me to the player on the, on the left-hand side there. The, this is an Atoll MD-100. And there's a bit of a story with Atoll because I've, I've sort of been experimenting with them for a while. Um, and Atoll is quite a big French company. Not really, it's been brought into the UK before, but then it's, a, you know, for, there was a big period when it wasn't, and now it's been brought back in again. Um, like I said, big range. Amplifiers, CD players, pre-powers, some quite high-end stuff. You know, proper, proper specialist brand. Um, like I said, that we're not that familiar with in the UK at all. There's very few people I mention it to have ever heard of it. Um, but it's interesting, and it's. I was lent by the manufacturers, uh, well, by the importers, should I say, a couple of amplifiers to try, and the big CD player that they do, the big uh, full width one, and really like the amplifiers. Um, but was particularly taken with the CD player. I thought, this is wonderful, this thing. I mean, it was £1,100. It's a different price point to the, the Riga. But a lot better than the Riga in every respect, to, to be honest. It was detailed and it was open. and you know, it, The whole presentation of it, the big sound stage that you want, but still very engaging, which is really unusual. Um, it's, like I say, it's a Riga, that's Riga's domain. Other manufacturers don't do that unless you're spending thousands. I mean, literally thousands on them. So it took me by surprise a bit, really, because here's a sort of a bit of an unknown French brand, and the sounding it's, it's got this engaging sounding CD player. About a week or so ago, I went to the which you'll have, I've done a report on it. Um, went to the Cranage Audio Show, which is just up the road from here, and um, the guys from Atoll were there, and they, sh they were showing a little MIDI system. A MIDI system, that's a, that's a phrase we don't hear nowadays, is it? I mean, I, when I think MIDI system, I, my mind goes back to around 1980 or so with the little Technics 315 system, if you remember that, little little amplifier, tuner, tape deck, uh, and a little DSL-5 linear tracking turntable, which shouldn't have sounded any good at all, but did. I mean, that, that was a great sounding little setup. Um, but yeah, MIDI, that was a, a, a true MIDI system, 315 for 315 mil wide. As is this three one five mil wide, uh, so we're yeah it's a bit of a bit of a retro throwback to the old MIDI systems. I think I think the Technics one was kind of the first first out to be honest. I want certainly one of the first MIDI systems. So we're yeah, full circle back to MIDI systems. Um, it's actually the same footprint as the Apollo to be honest. This one um, it's just turned around. It's exactly yeah it's exactly it's as wide as this is long sort of thing. So yeah they should show me the little this is called the MD hundred. Of MIDI, I assume. I assume. Uh, they do a CD player, they do a streamer amplifier. Unfortunately, they don't do a, just a purist stereo amplifier, they just do a streamer amplifier. Um, and people will know my thoughts on that. They do a, um, a little power amp for it as well, and they do a Fano stage, which I have downstairs, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm, that could be interesting because I bet that's good. So they've said, Do you want to try this? Do you want to, you know, so after the show, I. Uh, Guys from Atoll dropped it off for me to try, and I've had it playing, just running it up to temperature and everything, just to have a little listen to it. wasn't expecting a great deal, to be honest. I thought, well, it's a budget player, in well, budget, I suppose you would say. Um, you know, it might be quite interesting. It's kind of the same money as a, an Apollo, slightly cheaper than Apollo, actually, slightly cheaper. I thought it's got a front draw mech on it, because the Apollo, the big issue with the Apollo is it's top loader. And the amount of people who would love an Apollo, love the sound of it, but can't accommodate it because of the top loader, because it can't go on the top shelf. If it can't go on the top shelf, on your, if you've got a record player, it's got to go on the shelf below. And unless you've got a couple of hundred mil clearance, you're not going to, it's not going to be convenient to use it or easy to use. So for a lot of people, that completely discounts it. It's, you know, if they can't actually accommodate the thing, then you can't use it. And the, probably, I reckon, half the people who coming for a CD player who would buy an Apollo, don't, because it's a top loader. The benefits of top loader is it's reliability, there's no draw mech to fail, there's no, you know, you're not buying all these extra bits, so more money into the player, so that's that's the ethos behind it. But there is this trade-off that um, it's difficult to place. The Atoll, completely conventional, it's like a little CD player in miniature, proper draw mech, really good quality draw mech, I think it's TIAC based. Very well made, very solid, very heavy little player. This, I mean, you expect to sort of pick it up and it'd be like a cardboard box, like a lot of them, but it isn't. It's, I think, it's a big, big power supply in it. Um, very heavy sort of construction inside, similarly to the Apollo, both brilliantly well made. 
and like I say, I've been having it running, and it's one of those things. I have it play, playing in the shop just to run on, run in and warm up. And I can walk into the shop, and usually if there's a CD playing, I don't tend to be distracted. If I put a record on, I can't draw myself away. But interestingly, with with little MD hundred, walk into the shop, and I kept stopping and listening for a bit, and then continuing on. Oh, this is a good bit on it. Oh, this is a great guitarist on. I was sort of thinking, hang on a minute, this is this is really good. I mean, it, it, way beyond what I expected it to be. Not as good as the big full width. I did a bit of a side by side with that. Not as good as the big full width one, but that they do. The 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 CD hundred is the bigger one. But then it's four hundred pounds cheaper, five hundred pounds cheaper actually. So it shouldn't be. So I thought, well, surely it can't be. Surely it's not going to be anywhere near an Apollo. I mean, that's unthinkable, isn't it? Um, so I've been doing a bit. Well, the past couple of days, I've been listening to the Apollo for about a bit, three, four tracks. Switched to the CD hundred, and it's been really interesting. The conclusion is, if I was, if I had to take one home and live with it for the rest of the rest of my days, I don't know which one I'd take. But they're totally different to each other. They are totally different to each other. Um, both very engaging. I mean, the enga engagement is the Riga thing. I mean, that, that's what they were always beat everybody else for because it's, it, they just hold your attention. You can't draw yourself away. If, 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 it's, if this is playing and you walk past, you have to stop and listen. This does it, not quite to the same degree, but this, the, the Atoll does it as well. And it's got this sort of something in the music that just makes you want to keep listening to it. There's a rhythm and timing thing that's, that seems to gel with it, which is not a digital sort of thing somehow. To me, most digital things sound a bit insipid and bland and uninteresting. You don't, there's nothing to nothing to pull you into the music at all. But this does it, um, in spite of it being a more conventional layout. You know, it's you know you get your draw back and all this sort of thing. And it's actually clearer and more precise than the Apollo. The only thing I'd say possibly is it's not. It, it, you could describe it as being a bit lightweight. I and mean, the full width one isn't. The full width one has got a big, solid sound to it. This sounds like a lightweight version of it, but not tragically lightweight. Not so much that it sounds. People would describe it as I hate the phrase, but lean. It's not to that degree. Um, I mean, the Apollo has got a lovely, big, warm sort of sound to it, but in some respects, when you compare these like for like, it sort of almost can sound a little bit thick in the bass. The Apollo, by comparison. And this sounds nice and precise, and you, there's certain tracks I was listening to, there was a backing vocal that was much easier to place than the, than the Apollo. Um, I think I was listening to it for, for either, to either two, for either of the two, for an extended period. I think the Apollo was, would be the one that I wouldn't tire of totally. But then the, the Atoll okay, is a lot better than all the competition for that. Um, I can't imagine the Marantz or uh, even the Roxanne that I do, which is almost, well, more than twice the price of this. I can't imagine the Roxanne holding me attention like, like this does. So I've been really impressed, to be honest. Um, totally unexpected. Um, but it's great for me because my problem has been top loader, can't have it. Uh, have you got anything that's got a draw back? No, I haven't. Unless you want to spend 1300 And that's, you know, so the fact that we've got the little, the little Atoll MD 100 here now is superb. I'm really pleased about it. And like I say, quality-wise, they're not giving away much to each other. Just a different presentation, sort of warm, a warmer sound, a more precise sound. Take your pick, really. Um, and to be honest, though, if I had a customer with a full Riga system and they couldn't accommodate one of these, I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending the MD hundred because it's it's still got that engagement, um, which the you know the Riga people. Not everybody, this sounds like a bit of a put down to other customers, it's not at all. I think people listen in different ways. Some people never get the, the engagement thing uh, and will concentrate on what they can hear detail wise in the background or how loud it goes or how dynamic it is or how much bass it's got. Um, if, you're, if you get the engagement thing, you will really, you will really like the Atoll range. And all of them seem to have it. It does seem to be a thing within the range that they do have that sort of musicality to them, um, which is. Like I say with vinyl, that was always the vinyl thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stick the two of them on the table over here so I can plug them in and just show um, what they look when they're lit up, which is, look at how pretty they are when they're all lit up. So let's, uh, I'll move the camera and we'll have a look, okay? Okay, so yeah, the uh, Atoll MD-100, 
Very, very solid construction, very heavy little unit considering. Um, yeah, that again takes you by surprise the weight of it. Big transformer, um, quite a heavy transport mechanic, which is, like I said, I believe is TAC based. On off on the back, uh, oh, it goes into standby, take out a standby on the front panel. And all the buttons and everything just feel really nice. It's just got a really, really nice feel to it. So just conventional draw mat, which, like I say, this has always been the problem for me with the, the Riga. However clever it is to have a, a manual draw, um, in some situations you just can't accommodate that. So this this is a great answer to it. It goes thoroughly conventional. Um, yeah, just a complete off a tangent. That CD is, uh, if you want to impress your friends, Cats and Jammer, Rockland. It's a bit of a sort of rocky sort of album, but one of the most dynamic recordings I think I've ever ever heard. Really, crazily dynamic. Um, but yeah, so like I say, a bit of a tan bit going off on a tangent. Um, so yeah, so it finds track listing, got play, and then track select. It's it it just works beautifully. It just does everything you would want it to do. There is a remote which is quite well specced. Um, anybody who's watched my videos knows I never get the remotes out. I don't use remotes, but it's probably <laughs> for the sake of review, I probably should, but I don't. I don't tend to. So yeah, that's the that's the atoll. Like I say, beautifully made thing. It just it's. I mean, it seems ridiculously good value considering the, the build of it. Okay, so Riga on off button. There's no standby with it. Straight in, door open. Disc in now with a disc. You Press it in like a DVD. It's got three three little ball bearings. Drop the lid down, and you'll notice now it says it says I can get away from the reflection. Initializing. I have to wait for the initializing to switch to track listing. As soon as you've gone to track listing, you can then play. Uh, that's because it buffers up, and that's part of the reason the, the Apollo sounds so good. Is it does it does buffer the um, for, for about the first minute or so of the recording um, to stop any sort of issues with you know, mistracking or anything like that. And it does work. I mean, that's the reason, has always been the reason their players have been very good. Um, but it just means you've got a bit of a pause before you can actually go into playing. And then we've got track select, backwards, forwards, whatever. And it's, yeah, just very minimal controls, but works really well. And to stop, you can just open the top, just take the door out, the CD out. And that's it. Yeah, it's very, very straightforward. No complications. Let's have a quick look at the back panel. Not a lot going on in the back panels, but let's have a quick look anyway. Yeah, totally straightforward on the back panel, just line out on the atoll, a uh, little coax and an optical. Uh, so if you want to use an external DAC, you can. Standard IEC, and there's your, your, there's your on off switch. Um, really get pretty much exactly the same, actually. It's your standard line, a little optical and a coax. Uh, IEC that Riga do use a two pin, which is it's just, uh, somebody rang up in a bit of a panic after they bought um, Riga product after me and said it's got it's got two pins and it's they've given me a three pin uh, lead, but it's compatible compatible both you know compatible that way around. A little fuse on there, so it's got an, ex an ex accessible fuse if you ever need that. Never known one of those fuses blow, but um, yeah. So that's the that's the back panel. Very like I say, very straightforward. Yeah, so that's the, the Atoll MD-100 and the, the Riga Apollo. Like I say, I'd be hard pushed to choose between them, to be honest. It's a very, you know, very, very good in their own ways, but very different to each other. So, yeah, I hope you like that. Um, feeling like a bit of a Luddite, for weirdly, for, re for doing reviews of CD players, but um, I think it's valid. It is valid nowadays, because it is something that is really growing. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give a like, and I'll see you in a future video. Thank you very much.